The following program consists of two videotapes. The first is a Mavis information program with farmers who tested the new four-wheel drive tractors and their reactions and comments. The second is an introductory direct mail video that was mailed to prospective customers in March of 1993. And I guess over the years, as our farming operation grew, we, uh, the first uh, four-wheel drive we had was a 7520 John Deere. And then we've had uh, several versatile and Ford products, and uh, now we're running an 8960 John Deere. First four-wheel drive tractor I had was a uh, used 145 versatile. I had the 800, and now I have a, an 895 versatile. I started farming in the, in the late 20s. I run two uh, 9180s. Early in the design and development, John Deere brought farmers together to discuss their four-wheel drive tractors. Many were owners of competitive machines. All brought along ideas and improvements they'd like to see on Palmer models. Does this also have the screen inside like the combine suit? Is that the same level? Is, it seems to me like this a little lower. This is farmer input. It's critical to design and development at John Deere. John Deere videotaped these farmers discussing their own four-wheel drive tractors and the new tractors that they had operated earlier that day. We brought you into our folds a little over a year ago, and that was to see our prototype tractor. As you see these tractors coming closer to us, you'll see some of the changes. The next step in those tractors you saw a year ago is what these three tractors are here, and they are a pilot build, so this is our... Before operating the new tractors, John Deere personnel detailed the changes since their last meeting, everything from engine power to seat adjustments. The seat is air suspension. It's the same seat that we've introduced on the six and 7,000 series. It now has attenuation. It goes side to side and fore aft. And it free swivels when you pull that level. There was a new concept called power bulge that they would experience with these new models. We not only have constant power in them, when, when you pull down from rated speed, the power now actually goes up, and it goes up as much as 30 horsepower on the big model. And that's something we call power bulge. When everyone was checked out, they were ready to get started. Well, should we start it up? Yeah, I'm ready. Introducing four new four-wheel drive tractors, the new 70 series Power Plus models, the 8570 with 250 flywheel horsepower from a John Deere 7.6 liter engine. The 8770 with 300 horsepower from a John Deere 10.1 liter engine. The 8870 with 350 horsepower from a 10.1 liter engine that features directed cooling around the top of each cylinder to improve reliability and higher performance. The 8970 with a massive 400 horsepower from a 14 liter engine. Besides new horsepower ratings, the 70 series have an exclusive new kind of power called Power Plus, the result of a new electronic governor. Look at the difference this makes in an engine's power curve. On a standard engine, the curve remains flat, constant, for about 400 RPM. Now look at the new Power Plus difference. As the RPMs lug down, the horsepower increases, increases 5 to 7 percent above the advertised rated horsepower. And to control this productive advantage, the 70 series have a new feature called field cruise. With field cruise, the operator sets the maximum speed and then dials in the desired RPM. Setting field cruise signals the governor to provide instant engine response to load changes. So what were these farmers' reactions? It seemed awful good to me. It uh, was real snappy. Come right back, you know. I felt that the uh, John Deere engines that uh, this uh, electronic power bulge that those engines held their RPMs better 
than the older series in the upper ranges. As far as their lugging ability, that, that surprised me. And they had the bark to them. When the going got tough, it seemed like the, you, know, you could just feel it. To me, the addition of the electronic fuel systems on them makes them much more responsive. You think you've got a, a lot bigger motor than what you actually have. Starting the tractor's under load, they'll hold the RPM a whole lot better than anything I've ever been into, in, including the, the 855 cubic inch Cummins diesel. It, but they just will lug down as well or better than the, than the bigger Cummins motor. Power Plus, it seems to me like that's just going one step further above constant power instead of maintaining the same power that your power increases under your loads and it has a quicker response, quicker recovery. Well, you're going a step further than Cummings then. Uh, you're putting out above constant power. And that was a real test to, to see how far down it would come. And it either pulled down three or 400 RPM and just went right to it. When you hit a little wet spot and bogged down, I mean, that engine kind of just opened up and <laughs> got a little more power within and, and pulled you on through it and then kind of settled back down and just running on down the field. You know, I really wouldn't want to pull my tractor that hard because I'd probably slip a little more and a little more field compaction than I want. Yeah, I really like that there uh, uh, speed control deal because that's going to, when you have a light, oper light field operation, we don't need all that extra power. You can throttle it back and it's going to be right there and you're going to know it's going to stay there and that's going to be quite a feature for fuel saving. Well, I think it's going to be real good for, for spraying if you're trying to incorporate chemicals with a field conditioner or something like that where you're, you're needing to keep a, a constant speed through the, right. through the whole field. Another new feature farmers asked for was the electronic decelerator. The operator can slow the tractor simply by pushing a button on the floor. Immediately, the engine speed drops to the automatically controlled point. Then, when the decelerator button is released, the engine RPM instantly returns to field cruise speed. It's great on end rows while turning. I think it's just kind of like the, the resume control on your car. You set that to, for your RPM, and then on your turns and places, if you use your the accelerator, right, just comes back to the same speed that you, that you want. But at the speeds we were traveling, pulling those implements, tillage implements, uh, that, that was a pretty nice feature to slow down and control yourself on the corners. And then I found myself using that deceleration pedal on the ends. And then with the torque reserve those engines had, you were right back up to, to speed again when you let that thing off. And what about the new comfort features and sound levels? You know, it's, you know, it's got to be pretty darn nice when the, for me, the biggest thing I worried about when we were switching tractors today was which station of radio station am I going to find? <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely a, a quieter tractor, the quietest four-wheel drive tractor I've ever been in. I like the operation of the seat where it works both ways, where the, the seat in my versatile only goes from side to side. And I was really amazed at the good visibility out of I know I could put a 12-hour shift in there with no problem. The comfort impressed me a lot. I think really the, the tractors we drove today are, are much easier to operate than the, the 895 Versatile that I have. Everything is placed where, where it's handy. I've been kind of out of touch with the John Deere four-wheel drives for several years, and they do seem like they've come a long ways with their performance and their whole ease of operation. And Well, I felt your, uh, your 70 series John Deere hydraulics and the steering were very smooth and fast responsive compared to my 9180. I like the, uh, the ease of servicing the thing. The new 70 series from John Deere keeps the promise to listen to the needs of farmer customers the tractors in the field. and what they want in new equipment, to have farmers test prototypes on their own farms, to respond to their evaluations during development and verify them in the pilot build models. The new 70 series Power Plus models from John Deere. Lots of power, lots of operator comfort. 
I mean, you can't imagine you could ask for anything more. Well, it's a nice, nice factory to drive, I tell you. I had the feeling that uh, this uh, 8870 with the 350 rated engine horsepower that I probably could uh, replace my 8960 and not really notice any decrease in productivity just because of that extra reserve. Anything we need to do with the tractor? No, I thought I'd have a few comments, but I really don't. It seems real good to me. Yeah, it really does. Well, it just, uh, well, a pleasure to operate. You know, safety is another feature that adds value to these new tractors. A feature that's easy to demonstrate and whose benefits are clear. Like hydraulically actuated and oil-cooled wet disc brakes for sure stops. And variable ratio power steering for smooth control. Control that keeps operators safe. Be sure to point out the all-new lighting package, this large platform, the handrails, and the angled steps. And be sure to remind your prospects that all daily service is done from the ground, from oil checking to fuel filling, including these handy sight gauges. There are no daily acrobatics when servicing. So demonstrate and sell these features and benefits, including the fact that John Deere wrote the book on safety. They're here, and more powerful than ever. Introducing the new John Deere 70 Series Power Plus four-wheel drives. Greater engine horsepower, plus higher power reserves, plus powerful new efficiencies, plus more powerful reliability. Four new tractors that reshape horsepower and torque curves to deliver the John Deere Power Plus advantage. Let's take a look at our newest model, the 8870 tractor. It features an all-new, highly advanced John Deere 10.1 liter engine that generates 350 plus horsepower. That's right, 350 plus horsepower. Thanks to the impressive new torque reserves and new programmed fuel delivery system, if you lug down, you can actually generate as much as 375 engine horsepower between 1900 to 2100 RPM. That's 25 more horsepower than at rated speed. The new wide power bands let you lug engine speed to as low as 1600 RPM and still develop the same horsepower you have at 2100. Where other four-wheel drives struggle to maintain a relatively flat power curve, we produce a power bulge, a massive building of horsepower that enables you to pull through even the toughest conditions. I was surprised at the way that engine could pull so well and just hold right in there get down and work, you know, on these little knolls that just chugged right on up there, didn't, didn't sweat it at all. This muscular response is also very evident at low engine speed. Notice the shape of this torque curve. Torque builds quickly as the engine lugs from 2100 to 1600 RPM. But instead of peaking and dropping like others often do, we've reshaped the curve to maintain this high level of performance to as low as 900 RPM. You get outstanding performance during low throttle maneuvering, heavy load starting, or heavy tillage and PTO operations. Here are some of the enhancements we've made to improve performance and reliability. For example, on the 350 horsepower 8870 with the new 10.1 liter engine, we redesigned the combustion chamber, increased piston cooling oil by 30%, increased fuel injection pressures and enhanced timing to improve durability and increased airflow. A new coolant route helps lower temperatures of the cylinder head, head gasket, pistons, rings, and liners. And now, new John Deere 70 Series tractors also include an exclusive new field cruise engine control. Simply adjust the dial and you'll maintain a constant engine speed, regardless of soil conditions or terrain. What I like about the new 70 Series four-wheel drive tractors is this feature right here. It'll allow me to preset the RPM and hold it right where I want it. As you notice, you can get to a much more precise reading with the dial than you can the, the throttle. I think this control is one great feature. This has got torque you wouldn't believe. That little switch just won't let her fall below that set RPM. There's something to it. 
What's more, setting the field cruise engine control under 2100 RPM produces an almost vertical governor response, a lightning bolt fuel burst that allows the engine to respond immediately to load encounters. You can maintain constant engine speed and rely confidently on the outstanding power performance to overcome virtually any field condition. And new John Deere 70 series tractors also feature a new decelerator switch. Simply push this button and the engine speed drops automatically to a controlled point. Release it and return to your field cruise speed. One of the new features I really like on the new 70 series four wheel drive is the push button decelerator. Simply push the button on the floor, decelerates the tractor and frees your hand up in order to raise the implement up and make your turn at the end of the row. Come around and I line back up. All I have to do is release the button from the floor and it returns the tractor back to the operating RPM. It's one of the features I really like about this new tractor. The operator can also monitor engine RPM, true ground speed, area covered, distance traveled, and other important data, including PTO RPM. A fully independent 1000 RPM PTO is an option that provides smooth hydraulic engagement and disengagement and is controlled by a heavy-duty wet multi-disc clutch. Also available on the 250 to 350 horsepower tractors is a draft-sensitive three-point hitch option. User-friendly controls let you adjust sensitivity, raise height, and rate of drop quickly and easily. A special remote switch lets you raise and lower the hitch outside the cab for even easier hookups. And all four 70 Series Power Plus tractors feature three SCVs as standard equipment. A fourth is an option. The new John Deere 70 Series Power Plus tractors also offer outstanding visibility, excellent air ventilation, and a quiet operating environment. I really enjoy this new Sound Guard cab. I put a lot of hours in the field each day. The gauges are easy to read. The gear shift lever and SCV levers are within easy reach. The cab visibility is truly outstanding. John Deere has really done their homework on this one. That new air cushion seat with a four-way movement is real nice. They've even got a tool drawer to keep chains and wrenches off the floor. The Ultra Deluxe 24-speed power sync transmission with high-low power shift is extremely productive. This fully synchronized shift-on-the-go transmission offers 10 speeds between 3.5 and 7.5 miles per hour, perfect for field operations. It also features a heavy-duty true wet clutch for excellent reliability. But if you don't need a wide variety of speeds, the economical 12-speed synchro transmission is perfect. Especially when combined with the new higher torque reserves, you can select the speed you're most comfortable with and operate with complete confidence all day long. We also offer a 12-speed power shift transmission for shift-on-the-go capabilities without clutching. Electronically modulated solenoid shifts provide smooth gear transitions. And of course, the new John Deere 70 Series Power Plus tractors are a cinch to service. Simply check the engine oil, transmission, hydraulic oil, and grease only two hinge pins. Daily service takes less than two minutes. A guy really ought to look at him hard. I mean, even if he hasn't looked at a green one in the past, I was real surprised with that fuel cruise. I like that. You know, they just handle like a breeze. Steering and hydraulics are right there and up and down. and Really smooth and nice to run. I know I could put a 12-hour shift in there with no problem. New John Deere 70 Series Power Plus tractors. More horsepower, more power reserves, more reliability. So see your John Deere dealer for the new 70 Series.